Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, let's let's have a look at this question on geometric series. So it's building on the work we were doing on um, the theory of geometric series. So the first three terms of geometric series are x squared, 5x minus 8, and x plus 8, where x is an element of or. Use the common ratio to show that x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64 is equal to 0. So very much building on, on the one we just did a few minutes ago, and we're going to use the same theory in this one. We're going to use the fact that T3 over T2 is equal to T2 over T1. Okay, so for this one, that's my T1, there's my T2, there's my T3. So I'm going to say X plus 8 over 5X minus 8 is equal to 5X minus 8 over X squared. And just like in the last one, let's cross multiply again so that I end up with x plus 8 times x squared is equal to 5x minus 8 over 5x minus 8. I just want to make sure I've made no state mistakes. x plus 8 over 5x minus 8, 5x minus 8 over x squared. Looks good. That looks good. Okay. So x by x squared is x cubed. 8 by x squared is 8x squared. 5x by 5x is 25x squared. 5x by minus 8 is minus 40x, minus 40x again, plus 8 eighths or 64. Okay, let's bring everything over to the left. Minus 25x squared, minus four, oh, plus 40x, plus 40x, minus 64 is equal to zero. So anything that moved over the other side of the equals to sign had to change sign. Okay, let's tidy up. There's my x cubed. There's my two x squareds. So minus 25 plus eight is minus 17 x squareds. And there's my two x's. So there's my 80x minus 64 is equal to zero. Okay, so that's it shown. The next part, if f of x is equal to x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64, show that f of one is zero and find another value of x for which f of x is equal to zero. Okay, so we've done a few of these in algebra, so it's a great opportunity to, to, to revise. So f of one, OK, so when you see f of 1, can you see that x now, because this is called f of x, x has been replaced by 1. So that means replace everything with 1 all the way across so that you get 1 cubed minus 17 times 1 squared plus 80 times 1 minus 64. OK, so let's put that into the calculator. So 1 cubed minus 17 times 1 squared. Uh, plus 80 times 1 minus 64 and it is indeed equal to 0. Okay, um, so that's perfect, that's it's shown. Now we need to find another value of x for which f of x is equal to 0. So you have a few choices here, one of course is long division. Okay, so you write down um, f of 1. So x is equal to 1 is a root. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. It is always the factor that we long divide in. And we will long divide him into x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64. OK, so what must we multiply by x to bring him up to x cubed? That'll be an x squared. And you must multiply him by everything on the outside. So x squared by x, x cubed, x squared by minus 1, minus 1 x squared. Change the sign, change the sign. 
and you get the X cubes to, to cancel, which is exactly what you set out to do. Add these, so minus 17 plus one, it yeah, gives me minus 16 X squared. Okay, and I take down the ones I haven't used plus the 80 X minus the 64. And I do it again. What must I multiply by X to bring it up to minus 16 X squared? Well, it's gonna to have to be a minus 16 X. So multiply him by everything on the outside. So minus 16 X by that X on the outside is minus 16 X squared. Minus 16 by plus one is plus 16 X. Line under it, change the sign, change the sign and they cancel. And I get plus six, plus 80 minus 16, 64X. Take down the 64 that I haven't used already and I do it again. What must I multiply by X to bring them up to 64X? It's going to have to be a plus 64 and then multiply that 64 by everything on the outside. So 64 by X, 64X, 64, 64 by minus one, minus 64. Change the sign, change the sign, cancel, cancel. Okay, so the other two roots of this cubic equation are within the quadratic x squared minus 16 x plus 64. And if I solve that, I will get the other two roots. Okay, so the last one I did in this session was done with the minus b formula. Let me do this one with factorizing. So it's, he's a single x squared here. So it, I'll use the factors of 64 to help me um, factorize. So of course you have 64 by one, you'll have 32 by two, you will have three won't go in, four will go in. And of course you'll have eight by eight, okay? Um, and I need a minus 16 here, so it'll have to be, yeah, I can either have plus eight or plus eight or minus eight or minus eight, okay? And it's staying with all these, I can have either sign on them. Why am I choosing this one? Well, all of these meet the factors of 64, but the right option for this particular question are the ones that when I add them together, I get minus um, 16. So that's why it's that row there. So open them out, uh, factorize the x squared into x and x. Now factorize the plus 64 um, and choose the right ones that gives you minus 16. So x minus 8 is equal to 0, x is equal to 8. And of course, these are equal roots, which is why the question just says find another value. It didn't say find the two values. The reason for that was because they were equal roots. So x being equal to 8 is the other answer to that question. OK, so an algebra type 1 married with a... Um, married with a, a geometric sequence, okay? What is the other way I could have done it? Well, of course you could have used um, equating the, the poly, equating the coefficients, x cubed minus 17x squared plus 80x minus 64. Okay, and if you multiply this out and you equate the coefficients, you should get the same thing. So I'm going to get um, an ax cubed for this one. I'm going to get a bx squared when I multiply this by this, an x by c. Then I'm going to come across the bottom and I'm going to get a plus ax squared plus a bx plus a c. OK, so you equate the coefficients now. So what do I mean by that? Well, you let the x cubes equal to the x cubes. OK, so I have a x cubed being equal to x cubed. Therefore, a is equal to one. It has to be if the left hand side is equal to the right. A has to be one. Now, why am I doing this in the first place? OK. I put the wrong sign in, didn't I? Okay, let me fix my signs just for one sec. There, there, and there. Okay, why am I doing this? Well, 
this factor that I found, x minus 1, I know that if I multiply that by a quadratic, this is the theory, if I take that factor and I multiply it by a quadratic, I am going to get this cubic. Okay, so that's all I'm saying. So I wrote down the general form of the quadratic that I'm going to get, uh, or that will, will be. And then when I multiply the factor that I know by this, I'm going to get this um, cubic equation. Okay, so you let the cubes equal the cubes. Now the next bit I'm going to do is let the squares equal the squares, okay? So let me show you that one. I'll have bx squared minus ax squared being equal to minus 17x squared. Okay, and you can drop the x squareds all the way across so that I get b minus a being equal to minus 17. I know that a is equal to one. So let me fill him in, bring him over. B is equal to minus 17 plus one. B is equal to minus 16, okay? And then the next part I can do it is I can let the X's equal the X's. So uh, XC or CX, whichever way you want to write that, minus BX is equal to 80X. Just drop the x's all the way across or divide across. Okay, um, c minus minus 16 is equal to 80. c plus 16 is equal to 80. Bring him over the other side. So C is equal to 64, okay? So therefore, your quadratic, which was AX squared plus BX plus C, the one we knew we'd find out, is going to be 1X squared minus 16X plus 64. Okay, can you see that? I just filled in these three values. And of course, that's the same quadratic that we got up here. OK, and then you solve that and you find your solution for X. So for anyone out there who doesn't like long division, equating the coefficients is another way of doing it. OK, um, so yeah, options. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.